Now that my latest electric football figure painting project is complete, I thought I'd take this opportunity to have a discussion about the materials I use to uh, paint and customize my figures. I've talked so much about how I do so, not nearly enough about uh, the materials I use to facilitate it. So that's what we're going to do today. Uh, we're going to talk about paint, we're going to talk about brushes, palettes, and a few other things. Uh, now we should probably begin with uh, the medium itself. I use acrylic paint uh, for my electric football figures. This is a, uh, the type of paint that Tudor Games actually sells. There are coaches out there who uh, prefer and advocate for enamel paint on electric football figures. Um, whether enamel looks better or worse on an electric football figure than acrylic paint is subjective and debatable. So that's not what we're going to be talking about here today. I prefer acrylic paint for a few reasons. One is that it doesn't have an odor. Uh, and now I have some experience with enamel paint from when I was a youngster. I made model cars and then later on uh, Japanese Gundam action figure robots. And in each case, uh, the odor w was overwhelming, especially, you know, in places where I didn't have good ventilation. I can still remember the headaches I used to get uh, when uh, putting together model cards, model cars when I was a youngster. Uh, acrylic paint has no odor. Um, requires no ventilation. I also prefer acrylic because it, it's water-based, which means it's water-soluble. Enamel is oil-based, uh, so it's not water-soluble. And uh, with a, an acrylic paint, you simply need uh, uh, water, soapy water, to clean out your brushes. But with um, enamel paint, it requires a, a, a very strong odiferous paint thinner or a turpentine or something like that to, to, to clean your brushes with that. And of course, the other concern is staining. Um, uh, if you get acrylic paint on your carpet, your your significant other and or spouse is not going to destroy you because uh, acrylic paint is easy to get out of carpet. It's extremely difficult to get enamel paint out of carpet. And I still have uh, the emotional scars to prove it. You get acrylic paint on your fingers, just go wash your hands, it'll come off. You get enamel paint on your fingers, uh, you're going to have to get out some uh, paint thinner and or turpentine to get it off. So the point is, I prefer acrylic paint uh, for all those reasons. Uh, particularly because it doesn't possess an odor. That's For me, that's the clincher. Now, what kind of acrylic paint to use for electric football figures? Well, I want to begin by saying there's absolutely nothing wrong with Tudor's uh, acrylic paint. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, this is the same stuff that Reaper Models sells. It comes in the same bottle, the same size, and the SKU numbers on specific colors are identical between Reaper and Tudor uh, bottles of paint. So I'm pretty sure it's the same stuff. Uh, similar price point as well. This stuff uh, sells for $3.75 for one half ounce. And uh, whereas I say there's nothing wrong with Tudor paint, I do think that is incredibly expensive. Uh, there are plenty of other acrylic paints out there. Uh, you can get more for less. Uh, for example, this apple barrel paint. Uh, two ounces as opposed to one half ounce. And uh, you can get this for a dollar or less at any place um, uh, arts and crafts are sold. Um, I, I found 18 bottles of this on the internet for $18. You can probably find a better deal than that. But uh, I will say that I've not used this yet. Uh, my next project, whenever that is, I'll be using this stuff. I don't know what teams I'm going to be uh, painting. That's, that's uh, still way out there. Now, there's other name brands other than Apple Barrel. Uh, I think this is actually made by the same company. Yeah, Plaid. Uh, folk Art Paints. Um, uh, I have to pick this up for my trumpet player because I needed to paint his trumpet silver. Um, of course, I'm going to need to pick up a, another... Uh, metallic paint for this collection here for, for the gold paint for the 49ers and and Notre Dame and the Saints as well although I'm not sure if the Saints helmets are technically gold uh, they're usually painted gold though but now here's the thing Tudor Games paints are carefully selected to match current uniform colors and I do mean that let me give you an example when I purchased a, a build a team kit for the Chicago Bears uh, last year uh, they sent Ritterlich blue, and those, you know, as far as I can tell, that, that matches up with the Bears uniform in, in 2020. 
uh, now they sell void blue instead of really blue for the Chicago Bears. So uh, either the uniform has changed colors in some way, or they've decided that Void Blue is a better match for the Bears than Ritter Lick Blue. So um, as much as I scoff at the price, you know, there is some convenience involved, and they've already done some of the grunt work for you by matching up the colors for the uh, actual NFL team. That said, and this is another great thing about acrylic paint, uh, if you've got a wide selection of colors, you can make any color in the rainbow in the, in the entire spectrum. A few drops here, a few drops there. Tudor does that as well, some of their special blend paints. But basically, any acrylic paint that comes in a bottle that you can shake, like so, should be fine for an electric football figurine. Now, acrylic paint that comes in tubes, I would not recommend that. That's designed for painting on canvas rather than on plastic electric football figurine. Um, now, uh... As much again, as much as I scoff at the price of Tudor's paints, if you uh, purchase a, a build a team kit, uh, you essentially get the paint that comes with it for free. Let me explain that. Um, a build a team kit comes with all kinds of things. It comes with eleven unpainted Fab Five figures, which that's a six dollar value. It comes with a water slide decal sheet with you know enough jersey numbers for a hundred figures, but enough uh, peripheral decals for those eleven figures. That's a fifteen dollar value. Um, the, a set of 48 brass face masks, that's a $10 value. A set of 36 uh, paper chin straps with adhesive on it, that's a $5 value. And at least three bottles, half-ounce bottles of paint. So, you know, you're looking, and some teams actually have four depending on the team. Um, you're looking at, at about $45 worth of merchandise you get in those build team kits for $30 plus tax plus shipping. So it's a good value. The problem, of course, is catching... Uh, the team you want in stock. Uh, that's that's the real trick lately at, with Tudor. But listen, if money is no object, like I said, there's absolutely nothing wrong with Tudor paints. In fact, um, this little set right here, I've got five painters lined up here. This is their artist's kit where you get some paints that don't come with the build team kit. You get the Viper Green for uh, the base plates. You get Flesh Tones and you get Primer and brush sealer, which I won't be using in the future if I can help it. And if you watched my last few videos about painting my Pittsburgh Steelers, you'll understand why. Um, but uh, I can't remember what that sells for. It's either 15 or $30, but you are going to need those colors or those paints to, uh, to uh, uh, customize your unpainted electric football figures, unless you go another route. Now, if you're on a budget, then I strongly recommend uh, paints that come in larger containers at a lower price point. Uh, as long as it's water soluble, as long as it's free flowing, and if you shake it, you can hear whether it's free flowing or not. Uh, but not in tubes. Uh, now, if you do happen to have acrylic paint in, in tubes and you're in a pinch, if you apply some drops of water to it, that should uh, do the trick. Uh, because water is used as a thinner in acrylic paints. And there are specific pigments of acrylic paint, even Tudor paints, that probably should be thinned down with a little water. Golden yellow comes to mind. Um, your mileage may vary, uh, vary on that. But um, the good news is that even a half ounce bottle of Tudor paint does last quite a long time. Uh, for example, uh, I'm still, uh, I'm about to run out, but I'm still on my very first bottle of Viper Green that's painted uh, over... 150 base plates over the past uh, year, about 15, 16 months. So um, that's good. And the same is true with the flesh tones. Um, I'm very sparing with the paint. Uh, I will, and I'll talk about this when we talk about palettes a little later on. I don't pour a bunch of paint out into the palette. I pour just a couple drops. And if I need more, I'll pour out a few more drops. And the reason for that is because acrylic paint does dry pretty quickly in the palette. And uh, dried paint is wasted paint. And when you're on a budget and when you're, you're pinching every penny, that is a valid concern. But again, with the Tudor paint, in a lot of cases, you're, you're paying for convenience. They've already chosen the, uh, the best matches for the team, for the professional teams. It's one-stop shopping on their website. And uh, if you purchase from them, it is in some small way helping them stay in business. And I know there's folks out there that think I'm anti-Tudor games. That's not true. I'm, I, I don't like their entry-level uh, electric football game boards. I think uh, 
well, I, I think they suck. And some of Tudor's merchandise, I do feel like, is is insanely overpriced for what it is. But that doesn't mean I dislike the company in any way, shape, or form. I mean, despite my concerns, they're still the uh, the best source for electric football accessories. Their modern painted figures are exquisite, and the uh, the unpainted Fab Five figures, and the Mean Thirteen figures, and the Pro Pack figures are all uh, uh, good values. I'm sorry, the Pack Ten figures. No, I think it is Pro Pack. Brian Nuts figures. We'll leave it at that. So no, I'm not anti Tudor games. I just wish they'd make better entry level game boards. Now that said, if you go on Amazon and look up uh, Apple Barrel paint set, you'll find the 18 paints. Uh, you see right here minus the uh, silver paint, which is actually folk art. Same company makes it, um, and I'm not—I can't remember if that was more expensive or not. It probably was, but with those 18 paints, I can uh, mix and match if I need to, and make uh, you know, paint every single team in the NFL, and possibly, if it comes to that, all the different teams in the NCAA. There's just an, there's um, um, except for flesh tones, which you know I still have plenty of tutors flesh tones but and except for gold which i'm gonna to have to pick up some gold metallic um the only colors here that that don't come in this set uh, that you, you would you would like to see at least i would like to see would be some sort of maroon or burgundy and i know they make that color but you can just take this is what this is the beauty of acrylic paint you can just take a some red and mix it with a, a drop or two of brown and there's your maroon or your burgundy and of course you know if you don't like either the greens that come with the set um, you can uh, mix a little, and you know, the old uh, hefty sandwich bag commercial taught us this: a little blue and a little yellow mixed together will make green, and so on and so forth. Uh, just look up a color wheel on the internet, and it'll show you how to mix all these different paints together to get different colors. Um, now, uh, how to maintain your paints when not in use? Uh, what's what's the worst thing that could happen to paint? Well, it can dry up and turn solid. Uh, so how do you combat that? Keep your paints in a room temperature area. Um, as long as it's not too hot or too cold, your paint shouldn't just magically dry up. Uh, but over time, you know, the, the the solids can settle to the bottom, and that's no good. So uh, every few weeks, I'll just sit and, and, sh and shake paint. I've already shook all these. I shook these the day they uh, arrived in the pack uh, from the uh, uh, wherever they came from. And uh, I do it 64 times each. You don't have to do it that many times. You can do it more if you want to. But um, that keeps the uh, um, it keeps the uh, solids from settling to the bottom and the water on the top. That's not what you want. Do that every few weeks. We'll say once a month. And your paint should never really dry up as long as you keep them sealed. As long as you don't you know leave them out with the lid flipped up or, or, taken, or the cap taken off or something like that. I'm sure acrylic paint does have a shelf life. Um... But as long as you keep your uh, paint stored in a relatively uh, reasonably warm and dry area, that shelf life won't be short. Just shake the paints every now and again to make sure they're not uh, uh, the uh, core components aren't separating inside the bottles, and you should be good to go. That's really all I've got on paints. Um, I think we'll actually talk a little about palettes before we talk about brushes. Now, this is really the only one I've used over the past year. You can see some of the paint is <laughs> really caked up there in those wheels. Sometimes it just comes out on its own. Uh, this one I can't get out, and I'm afraid to force it. I don't want to break the thing. But, you know, ultimately at some point I'll have to crack open one of these others. I like this one because I can sit all my figures in it and paint from this while, you know, while I've got my paints out here. I think this thing is designed to actually sit on top of a, a bucket of water. The, you know, the brushes would go down in here or something like that, but I don't use it for that. I use cups of water when I need to clean the brush. In fact, you can see them both. One of those is for Mod Podge, the other one is for the acrylic paint. Um, and warm, soapy water is the best, best practices for cleaning your brushes, and we'll talk about that again here in a few minutes. But, um, of course, paper towels are also a good idea to have those on hand. As are toothpicks. More and more I find that I'm using toothpicks more than brushes uh, for uh, fine details and uh, uh, trying to get those nice clean separations between two colors with no waviness you know between the colors i find that toothpicks are uh, more and more I'm, I'm relying on those in painting electric football figures um, 
but listen, pallets are, are very cheap at you know, any place that hobbies, you know, arts and crafts are sold. You don't have to pay a lot for these. And uh, their sole purpose is to put paint in and, and uh, you know, dip your brush in and paint your figures from that. Um, Palettes are also useful if you're going to be mixing colors to get a specific color. Example, um, a few weeks back, actually it's probably been a couple months back at this point, uh, the channel was gifted a, a large amount of electric football figures, and some of them had the uh, Tudor stickers on them rather than water slide decals. You know, the ones that I, I they just turn into a, a square on their backs. Uh, don't look very good in my opinion. So on a couple of those figures, as I was peeling them off, it took the paint off with it. And one of the uh, teams was the Green Bay Packers, uh, where um, it just pulled the, all the green paint off the back, and it was just, you know, naked white paint. So what I did is I took a little of the Tudor Viper Green and uh, put one or two drops of just jet black paint, and with it mixed it up, and it got the perfect shade uh, of Packers Green uh, for that particular figure, and I was able to repair the, uh, the, uh, the uh, damage. Now, before we move on to brushes, uh, the question uh, matte versus gloss should probably be addressed. What does that mean? Well, matte acrylic paint has no shininess. Uh, most of the figures I've painted are matte. I've used the, the matte paint. Most Tudor paints are matte finish. They, don't, they have no shininess. Uh, gloss acrylic paint does have a shininess to it. Now, that's your preference. Um, I roll with matte paints, and in the future I'm going to use a final coat of clear gloss acrylic paint as a sealer in place of the Tudor brush sealer. Uh, so it will look like the paint is glossy, but it is in fact the final coat of acrylic paint that's glossy. Your mileage may vary. Uh, do whatever uh, you prefer in such matter. I don't think one looks better than the other, in my opinion. Uh, I will say that a gloss finish is, is quite nice. All of Tudor's... Uh, modern pre-painted figures with the nice uh, uh, stick, uh, stamps and decals on them that look very realistic uh, or have a gloss finish that's probably airbrushed on by a robot. I, I don't know. I don't know if that's true or not, but it would seem so. Some coaches use other projects for a sealer, for a final coat. Um, you know, just get, get on Facebook and ask around and you'll get a hundred different answers when you ask that question. Now, as far as primer goes, the, the very first coat you put on a figure before you even think about putting uh, different paints on it, uh, again, nothing wrong with Tudor a brush primer. Uh, and it does last quite a while. One bottle, that's probably near empty if I can find it here. Uh, yeah, it's almost empty now, but one bottle has, has uh, primed over 150 electric football figures for me. So, you know, that's good. Uh, I can't really find any... Um, apple barrel primer as such. Now there's something called gesso. Uh, I think that's more for canvases. I hear Bob Ross uh, use that word a lot in his uh, painting TV shows. Um, but again, just ask around. The only thing you're looking for primer is something to put on the figure to make it less slippery for the uh, application of the acrylic paint. Uh, primer is usually white, but it comes in other colors as well. Tudor's brush primer is white. Um, it's just on there to help the acrylic paint stick better on the uh, the uh, electric football figures. Uh, in future, I might experiment a little with uh, sanding down the figures to get some of the gloss finish that those come with off the figure as well before applying primer. I don't know if that's going to make a difference or not. I don't want to obliterate any of the detailing on the figures by doing so. Uh, but that's what the primer is, is basically for, to remove the gloss finish from the uh, the figures. But you're going to find a lot of different uh, acrylic paints out there for sale in, you know, two ounce or larger bottles. And as long as it comes in a bottle, as long as it's a liquid, and as long as you can shake it and hear, you know, something going on in there, you should be good to go. Uh, some acrylic paints might require a little thinning with water before applying them to the electric football figures. Your mileage may vary with that. I would not recommend acrylic paints that come in tubes. Uh, as you know, in the same manner as oil paints, those are designed for uh, um, those have less water in them, and those are designed for painting on canvas rather than on plastic figurines. Uh, if that's all you've got, you might be able to get away with it by uh, applying some water, watering down this uh, 
tube paint in the palette after you've uh, you know squirted it down into it. That might work, it might not. Again, your mileage may vary. I've talked for about 20 minutes about paints. Let's move on to brushes. Um, I've said this in several of my uh, uh, uploads. Um, I do not see any reason to spend a lot of money on paint brushes. Um, these all came from you know the local superstore. I think at most they were five dollars per pack, probably less. Um, um, here's the thing: these are all disposable. Even the finest paint brushes are disposable, and they they do have. If you use them to paint these figures with, they're not going to have a long shelf life, no matter how well and properly you maintain them. Um, but you know you're looking for brushes with fine points. That's going to help immensely. Uh, in you know painting details on your electric football figurines. Um, that said, uh, my last project I didn't use a, a tiny brush. I use an actually actually a pretty large brush and use toothpicks a lot of the time for the fine details. So again, your mileage may vary, but you can't really go wrong with cheap paint brushes. Um, that's my opinion, and I'm sure some of the the cats out there who are are making these incredible works of art that look like photorealistic electric football figures might disagree. Now, I will tell you this, Reginald Rutledge, uh, he, his paintbrush uh, is, is, is gigantic, and he gets incredibly fine detail results to it. A lot of it comes down to the artist rather than uh, the materials. Do keep that in mind. Uh, his brush is, is even larger than that, and, you know, it's round, and the bristles are out everywhere, and he dips it into a bunch of paint, and he still manages to get nice, clean lines and great details on his figures. So, uh, those, these are just happening. You, you can find these paintbrushes at huge discounts and at larger uh, quantities than this. There's some of the brushes in there that won't be of any use to me, like the fan brush in the back there. Probably use a brush like this for uh, primer. Uh, you know, when you're at a, at a stage when you're not worried about fine details or, or, or sloppiness or anything like that. But, uh, you know, some of those smaller brushes in there will be great for uh, chin straps or uh, pant stripes if you're going to paint those on yourself. Um, but again, um, my experience has been that uh, there's not a lot of point in, in paying a lot of money for your paint brushes. Now, I, I have done so. Um, these three right here. I think I paid $15 for this set of brushes, and the paint came off the brush on this one on day one. Uh, nice small bristles on this one, but as you can see now, it's it's practically useless. I used this particular uh, uh, paintbrush for this end for the uh, face mask, bending the face mask into the proper shape before applying them to the figures. I still use these from time to time when it doesn't call for any delicacy or or, or worrying about... Uh, staying in the lines or anything like that. As you can see, as a brush gets older, no matter how well you maintain it, you start getting those bra a straight, I'm sorry, stray broken bristles uh, that go every which way, and that makes it impossible to, to do fine details with them. Uh, I wish, you know, with the benefit of hindsight, I wish I hadn't bought these because I only got maybe a month's use out of them before. Uh, they were all three pretty useless for painting electric football figures. They still have a use, like I just said. Uh, if I just need to cover up something real quick on a figure. Uh, a stray blotch of paint got on uh, uh, the buttocks or the base plate or something. I just use one of these and dip it in paint and fix that and then clean it out and be done with it. Now, how to clean brushes. Well, with acrylics, it, it couldn't be easier. You're just going to put some uh, soapy water, warm soapy water in a cup and just... Uh, put your brush down in it. I wouldn't really... Advocate a lot of tapping down on the bottom. That, 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 that can't be fair on the bristles at all. Uh, but, you know, just swishing back and forth and stuff. And then uh, you, you might let it soak for a minute or two. That won't hurt it. But uh, the most important part is to make sure it's clean once you uh, take it out. If there's still paint in it, just try, you know, running it a paper towel through it on both sides. Pinching it with a paper towel, trying to get some of that excess paint out of it and put it back in. Shake it a little more. If you don't l overload the brushes, it usually all comes out. Uh, it is important, uh, especially if you've got dark colors in a, in the bristles like this one has, uh, maybe not to use this for uh, paint, uh, a light colored paint, because some of that dark paint can 
even dry, dark colored paint can bleed into a light colored paint. Uh, so keep that in mind. All right. Um, I do have this little medicine dropper out on the table because I do use this sometimes if I have to water down the paint at any point. Uh, you can just use something like this to, you know, pick up a little water in it and just, you know, proportion out as many drops as you need. Now, if you're going to use this in paint itself, well, there's some cleanup involved. It's, you know, and you may uh, clog up the nozzle after a specific amount of time with that. Uh, suppose a, a paper clip, a bent out of shape paper clip, maybe a, a thumbtack could unclog it. Uh, but, you know, you can usually find medicine droppers at, at very low cost. So, um, uh, you, you want one dedicated entirely to water. And, and one, maybe, I, I don't know if that would be worth the hassle to have one for every color of paint in your possession or not. But, uh, you know, it's easy to keep these clean just by, you know, dipping them down in water after you're done. Uh, but there will be some buildup on the inside that you may not be able to uh, reconcile. And uh, one other tip I want to share that I can remember off the top of my head here. Uh, let's see if I can find a brush that has a nice crisp point on it still. Yeah, this one's a pretty good example. Um, there's nothing better than a brush that's new and still has that uh, stiff point on the tip because that makes it very easy to do your fine details on your electric football figures. That goes away over time. But now I'm going to show you a, a method to uh, extend uh, that benefit from a paintbrush. This is something uh, uh, Brandon Seiger uh, shared with me. And that's just use a little uh, uh, dish soap and on the on the bristles here's what i do i'll flip the cap i'm not going to do it now i don't want to get a mess on my fingers and just you know do this a couple times and get some dish soap on my finger and then after i'm done with the brush and after i've cleaned it i'll just uh you know sit here and do this with this dish soap you know as many times as i need until the brush is back to a nice point and then that dish soap is going to dry in there and it's going to keep it stiff it won't hurt the, the bristles at all it this won't prevent uh the destruction of a paintbrush but it will prolong uh, the the best benefits from a, a brush shape like this for a little while, and that is to keep a nice stiff uh, pointed uh, cone on it, which is really helpful when painting your electric football figures. One of the best ways you can extend the life of a paintbrush is to not use a whole lot of paint. And you know, if you slather this down in paint, you know, just to get something done quickly, uh, even if you brush it out thoroughly, you know, that, that's you know that's going to decrease the life of a paintbrush. You know, I try to just you know, use down on the tip and then just, you know, dip back into the paint as often as needed and then occasionally uh, clean the brush. Uh, if you watch Bob Ross, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's the same idea. But um, just don't with your brushes or anything like that. But uh, this is a really helpful tip and then it, it helps maintain the tips on, on these brushes quite well. All right, let me uh, just... Uh, Collect my thoughts here and look at what else is on the table here. Um, as I stated before, once a brush is ruined, I wouldn't throw it out. Uh, it can still have uses. This one, for example, uh, is what I've been using for a year for priming and sealing uh, figures. I didn't use it. I didn't use it to seal my last batch uh, because I was worried uh, that it's getting too ratty for that. But then I had that disaster with the sealing on the last batch that I had to go back and repaint. And I don't know if it had anything to do with the brush or not. It was a new brush. Uh, but I continued to use that brush for the rest of the project and got no cloudiness on all those other figures. But the point here, folks, is that uh, there's no sense in throwing a paintbrush away unless, you know, it's down to stubble. All the bristles are broken and it's down to stubble. And even then, I bet you can find a use for it. Like I said, I can use the uh, the, the butt end of these to, to stir my glue over here, the Mod Podge. That's a good use for those. And uh, you, know, you can still use these for quick... Uh, paint jobs, maybe not one this big, but I think you get the idea. And speaking of Mod Podge, we've talked about this before. Now, I don't really use this to paint as such, or even to seal the figure, but I do use it for decal application and face mask application. This is a little thicker than school glue. It touts itself as a, a sealer as well as a glue, but I don't know many people who would even consider uh, using this as a sealer for their electric football figures. It's... Apparently, if it gets too hot, like in a, a hot car on a hot summer's day, it can it can get sticky and turn back into a liquid. So beware. 
of that. But this is a, what a lot of people use for a face mask application and, uh, and watered down, obviously. And I also water it down when applying decals. Uh, but it, that seems to work well for me. Your mileage may vary, and there's all other kinds of uh, materials out there that people uh, advocate for. Um, again, you can find this stuff anywhere arts and crafts are sold. And, of course, I've talked about the sponge in the past. The only thing I use the sponge for is in decal application. I, I wet a sponge and put the, the decals on top of the sponge for uh, up to a minute until I can take tweezers and uh, uh, remove the decals from the uh, paper backing on which they, they came. And uh, Speaking of tweezers, I do keep some of these around for just that. I don't use them too much in painting uh, I, I, or even in face mask application. I use these more for decals and I have three different kinds depending on the job at hand. And uh, that appears to be everything that's out on the table. So what we talk about? Well, we talked about different kinds of paints. Again, there's absolutely nothing wrong with Tudor paints. Uh, but you can find more paint for at less cost. Uh, it may not be the same colors, but you can mix and match it because it is acrylic paint uh, to make any color you want. Um, let's sit here and look at the different colors that come in this 18 uh, paint set. Uh, now, this did not come with it. I got this... I, about over a year ago when I picked up the uh, trumpet player from footballfigure.net I needed to paint the trumpet silver and so this is what I used for that and I, I you know that took maybe three or four little drops of paint and I was like oh my gosh now I've got all this paint what am I going to do with it Detroit Lions Dallas Cowboys uh, any number of college teams that have silver helmets or silver pants or silver jerseys um, it has plenty of uses I'm going to have to pick up uh, metallic gold as well uh, for the 49ers, for the Saints, for um, uh, Notre Dame Fighting Irish. And uh, now we'll just look at the different paints in this set with the time that's left. Uh, it comes with 18 different colors, some of which will be useful, more useful than others for electric football figures. We'll begin with uh, uh, flag red. So there's, you know, Arizona Cardinals, uh, New York Giants, Houston has some red in it. If it's not the right shade, you can add some black to it to make it darker. You can add some brown to it to make it maroon or burgundy. There's there's the Washington football team right there if you do that. Uh, next paint here is uh, uh, nutmeg brown. You can use this for uh, uh, the Cleveland Browns, although I probably use the, uh, the chocolate brown right there for the Cleveland Browns. Uh, flesh tones, you could use it for that. Uh, let's see. Uh, Jack O' Lantern, that's orange. Uh, Denver Broncos. Um, the old Tampa Bay Buccaneers uniform. That's the perfect color for Tampa Bay. Uh, the uh, uh, dream, uh, creamsicle uh, uniform. Love that uniform. Tennessee Volunteers. I think most people say that without going to uh, a paint shop and uh, having the correct patina on hand or the, uh, the color hex code, this is the best match for Tennessee Volunteers right here. Uh, I'm trying to think of some other. I said Denver. There are some other. Well, Cleveland, you'd need to put a little brown in the the, the orange to get the, the proper color for Cleveland's helmet. Uh, but let's see. We have, uh, this is called the mini blue. There's probably Miami Dolphins and possibly even uh, uh, the Jaguars. Might need to be a little darker for the Jaguars. And uh, the Panthers. Uh, it looks like it'd be a good color for that. Uh, here's New Shamrock. That's a green. Uh... Probably New York Jets, probably not Green Bay Packers. You might want a darker color, and there is a darker one here that I think would work for the Packers. And it turns out the Eagles aren't green at all these days. It's it's actually a, a sort of teal, a sort of dark a teal color that I was not aware of until I looked it up. But uh, there's a green. Um, uh, bright yellow, I mean, obviously the Pittsburgh Steelers, that, that comes to mind. The Green Bay Packers, that would work for their yellow helmets. And uh, I think there would be quite a few other... Uh, applications of you know, Michigan, uh, several uh, LSU, several college teams you could use that to paint for. Now, here is a, a fuchsia. This might have limited use. It's a pink, basically. But, you know, uh, there's nothing wrong with pink shoes and pink gloves and pink uh, armbands on football players these days uh, for cancer awareness. There's a lot of players out there that do that. Uh, pink is not a, a, a taboo color for, for males anymore. So, you know, just keep that in mind. This is not necessarily a wasted color in this set. And here's a magenta, uh, bright magenta. Not sure 
uh, what that would be used for. I have to actually sit and think about that. Uh, it's too bright red for uh, Washington. Um, I don't know, any ideas? I mean, I'm sure we could mix and match it with other colors and come up with something. Uh, pewter gray. Well, there's Tampa Bay Buccaneers right there. I don't even think you need to mix that with any other color. Um, might need to put add a little drop of white in this for the Giants, their gray pants. Um, can't really off the top of my head think of any other teams that would benefit from pewter as such. Uh... Now here's just here's black Pittsburgh Steelers new um I almost said New Orleans Saints but I'm not sure their uniforms are technically black I'm not sure they're technically navy blue either I, I might need to look that up uh, but you'll be using plenty of this in electric football figure projects if only for the shoes or um, the face masks or uh, helmets if the if the team has a black helmet you know. but. Uh, can't go wrong with this color. Um, bright blue. Uh, New York Giants. Uh, possibly the Lions. In fact, yeah, probably the Lions. Maybe the Cowboys. Although, um, I'm not sure anymore about the Cowboys. Uh, this is too bright blue for the Bears. There's another color in here I think we'll use for the Bears. Um, Kentucky Wildcats. This would be a good color for those. Uh, not suitable for Michigan, not suitable for uh, Notre Dame. Both teams need to have, be a darker blue, Notre Dame more so. Uh, I'm trying to think of any other teams that have a bright... Duke. This would be an, a, a great color for the uh, the Blue Devils. Um, so certainly not a wasted color in this set. Two blue. There you go. That's probably going to be closer to um, uh, the uh, Bears. You might put need to put a, a drop of black in this to get it dark enough for the bears um just have to, we're gonna have to experiment with all these because again folks i've never used these before but there's enough coaches out there that use these i've seen enough examples of figures that do use apple barrel paints to know that it works just fine um but you know I'm gonna risk making a mess here just so i can look down in there yeah i think that may need to be just a, tra a tad bit darker and whatever you do, don't mix your paints inside the... Uh, that, that goes without saying, but I do want to say it. Don't mix your paints inside the bottles themselves, or you, you taint the entire bottle of paint. And make sure, if you're using a paint to mix colors, uh, use two... Di what I'm trying to say is use two different brushes to mix the colors, unless you're just going to pour it straight into the palette and use a medicine dropper. Okay, again, that kind of goes without saying. That is common sense, but I do want to say that. Don't taint your paints. All right. Six more paints here to go. Uh, melted chocolate. Uh, there's your Cleveland Browns for certain. And I'm sure there's other applications this could be used for. Uh, the footballs themselves in the quarterback's hands on Mean 13 figures or those old Tudor figures that I don't know if you can get anymore that had the, the, the quarterback figures. Um, let's see. Now here's a purple. Uh, purple Iris. Vikings. Um... Uh, the Panthers, either their home or away uniforms, has some purple in it. Um, LSU. Uh, there's plenty of teams out there with purple in their uniforms that this would be useful for. Let's see. Now, this is a, a, a lighter yellow, I think. Yellow Flame. And who knows? This might be more suitable for the... Uh, actually, no, looking at it, that's not suitable for the Steelers. But there's bound to be some teams out there that would uh, have a much lighter yellow in their uniforms. Not, certainly not at LSU. Um, I can't really think of any off the top of my head. Maybe an older Oregon. I, I don't know. Oh, Boise State, by the way, would probably be a good color for this bright blue. Uh, now, here's a, a baby blue. It's a parrot blue. I actually want to look at this. I don't think I've taken the cap off this bottle yet. Oh, that is a very, very bright uh, light blue. Uh, sky blue almost. Um, there is at least one NFL team that would benefit from this color, and I cannot think of what it is right now. Oh, Tennessee Titans. Uh, the, the away team, the top of the jersey, uh, would uh, benefit from this color. Also, if you're doing a throwback uniform, the Houston Oilers would benefit from this color. Okay. And uh, white... 
Uh, you're going to use probably more of this than any other color when painting electric football figures. Every single away team uniform is going to use this color. So you might even think about doubling up on some white paint, depending on how many figures you paint. I think this bottle could paint probably six or seven hundred figures. Um, that's just a blind guess I kind of pulled out of my buttocks, but, uh, you know, two, two ounces, 59 milliliters. Oh, I'm glad I saw that. I think this is how much paint is coming in my clear Tamiya acrylic gloss paint, 59 milliliters. So it looks like it's two ounces. Uh, that's good to know. And finally, uh, Holly Branch Green. Uh, there's your Green Bay Packers, probably. Um, I guess, you know, one of these colors would have to be used for the uh, base plates as well. Let's just do a little quick comparison here. I mean, that looks very similar to Viper Green, doesn't it? Uh, we'll have to, uh, it, like I said, we're just going to have to experiment with this paint. Maybe a drop of black is in order to get this. I don't know. That looks pretty Green Bay Green to me right now. I would be keen to use this for the Eagles as well, even though that's not the color of their uniforms anymore. It's it's more of a, of, of a turquoise. But with these 18 paints, I think you have a good starting point at any rate even if you have to mix and match a little to uh, paint a lot of different teams. Now, there is another 18 paint set out there that's all pastel colors. Uh, I don't know how beneficial that would be to you, but this is the uh, uh, the more popular set. And um, so I don't want to steer you the wrong way. Uh, beware of the pastel set. You might find some use for that with electric football. I'm not real sure. Uh, but there you go. That's my uh, little... Uh, I hate to call this a lecture because I'm not an authority on anything here, but my little discussion about paints, paintbrushes, and uh, some different uh, materials that benefit anyone painting electric football figures. Now, there's other coaches out there that do things completely different from me. Well, you know, you must respect that. And uh, there's coaches out there that think probably that I'm doing everything wrong. Well, go back and watch my last video and look at those finished figures and decide for yourselves. If I'm doing something wrong. The point is there are a lot of different ways to obtain the same goal in painting electric football figures and this just happens to be my way. I hope this was helpful. I know there's folks out there that are just starting with painting figures. I hope this will be beneficial. Uh, stay tuned for my football guys part two collector's guide. That's uh, what I'm going to be doing next. Then I'm going to put the electric football board back on the table and maybe Maybe we'll uh, do the evaluation for the, the Buccaneers. I don't know. If I haven't already done the Broncos yet, I can't remember. I'm, it's either the Broncos or the Buccaneers are next. We'll, we'll just have to see. And I'm making some more uh, electric football bases. Might work on that a little today. We've got all the little rectangles ready to glue together in here. I've got plenty of uh, prongs, probably more prongs than, than necessary at this time. But it, it doesn't hurt to have a lot of different prongs. That's where I am right now. Uh, feel a, a, a great weight has been lifted off my shoulders now that all 42 of those Pittsburgh Steelers are finished. And that's another thing I probably should have talked about. Uh, don't bite off more than you can chew, you know. 11 figures is plenty uh, when you're just starting out. 22 at most, 11 home, 11 away. That's a, that's a, that's a nice, manageable number of figures. When you've when you got 42, or sometimes I was even doing 57 at a time, that can get overwhelming and time-consuming and take a long time. So pace yourself, know your limits, and, uh, well, the, the two best, the two biggest things I can pass along as advice are, number one, be patient with painting electric football figures, and number two, uh, when you use acrylic paints, uh, any mistake can be fixed because acrylic paint is it, it, just real well. You can just paint right over something. Um, and I suppose number three, if you get frustrated with painting, just put your brushes down until you're not as frustrated anymore. It happens to all of us. Don't sweat it. That's, that's perfectly normal and perfectly natural. And you know, some days even the steadiest hand is going to shake more than other days. So that's something else to consider as well. Well, again, I hope this was uh, helpful for someone out there. If it's helpful for one person, it was worth sitting here for 45 minutes and talking. Well, I hope everyone has a great day and I'll talk to you again real soon.